Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. So let's say your adventurer is tired of uh, living on the go, tired of going into dungeons and collecting loot and fighting really dangerous monsters and living a life of danger. What do they do? They can take all of their life's earnings and invest it in a farm down at Cozy Oaks where they can fish, farm, and craft. So this is the newest game designed by Peter Jenk, the designer of uh, Quest for the Lost Pixel, one of my favorite games. Full disclosure, Peter and I have become friends over the years after I have discovered Quest for the Lost Pixel. And we realized that, hey, we don't live too far from each other. So he actually came over and we played this game together and he left this copy for me to do this review. So Cozy Oaks is a farming simulation game and it is at its core a competitive game, but it also has a unique solo mode. Cozy Oaks was uh, inspired by games, uh, video games like Stardew Valley, uh, Cult of the Lamb and Harvest Moon. Uh, Peter takes a lot of inspiration from video games and applies those to the tabletop. So this says that Cozy Oaks is a competitive farming game for one to two players. You'll be able to fish, mine, craft, care for your animals, plant crops, and more. Most importantly, you'll need to manage your hand of skills, resources, and time. Cozy Oaks is available right now on the Game Crafter. Uh, what you are seeing on the table is the additional neoprene mats that you can buy. You can play the game entirely without them. They just add a little bit of table presence, a little bit of color to your table. So let's take a look at the game, walk through it really quickly, and you can see what this is all about. So when you start your game, each player will have an old farm that they have purchased. You have a basic house, you have a greenhouse plot. The greenhouse is kind of all messed up and you have to pay to upgrade it. You have a windmill plot. Your old windmill is kind of all messed up and you have to pay to upgrade that. You have a farm here, but your farm has some weeds in it and some rotten crops that you eventually have to uh, get out of there. And you have a place for your animals here, a coop and a barn, but your coop is filled with poop and so is your barn. So you want to make sure you clean those out as well. The game itself takes place over three years and each of the years is uh, separated into seasons of spring, summer, fall and winter. And you will work through those seasons generating revenue, building up a little farming engine and doing all kinds of things based on your various skills. So what we're going to do for the rest of this uh, video is look at the skills and determine what they do during the game. Okay, so one of the, your first skills here is the improve skill and the improve skill allows you to clean up your farm so you can clean up those weeds and those rotten crops and that poop. And you can also eventually upgrade your house and your greenhouse and your windmill using this particular skill. All of the skills have a basic ability and they also have a boosted ability. And these gems are things that you can find during the game and you can spend those gems as a currency to boost your skills to make them more powerful. The next skill is called farming and this is your basic farming skill. This is how you uh, gather your crops, how you water your crops and all of that. The crops have their own deck of cards here and you can have various crops such as beans, apples, tomatoes, peppers, snow peas, and each of the crops will tell you what it produces after it has been watered and harvested. So at the beginning, at the beginning of the game, you will have three different types of crops available for you to purchase. And you do need to uh, pay attention of when these crops can be watered and when they can be harvested. Next up, we have livestock, and this is how you buy your animals and how you gather materials from your animals, and then that can also be boosted. Your animals come in two different kinds of shapes and sizes. We have barn animals and coop animals, and we have things like chickens and goats and beavers and owls and that kind of thing. So at the beginning of the game, there will be three different kinds of animals that we can buy for our farm. And then you will cycle through that deck during the game. The next skill we'll take a look at is crafting. So we can craft items. We can gather materials with one of the skills and then use those materials to craft various items. There is an items deck that consists of all the different items that we can craft. And we can craft things like aquariums and bee houses and wine barrels and carts and iron fences 
And then up here at the top, it tells you which materials you need to craft that. And then towards the bottom here, it tells you what kind of uh, victory points you might get at the end of the game or possibly some gold that you might be able to sell the item for in order to generate revenue to do other things. And at the beginning of the game, there will be three different items that you can craft available. The next skill is cooking. And cooking allows you to take your various, your, your produce and things and cook it into meals. And when you cook into meals, you can take a look at the food deck here. And this tells you all of the different kinds of food that you can cook, like tomato soup and donuts and baked chicken and green tea and tacos and cake. And then depending on the level of your skill, because your skills do level up, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, depending on which level your cooking skill is, you will get certain bonuses when you cook that food. At the beginning of the game, there are two different types of food that the village wants cooked. So you need to work towards those. And then you can go out and you can forage for materials in the local forest, uh, scrounging through trees and the underbrush and looking under rocks for all kinds of various things, including materials and bugs. So when you go out to forage, you will draw a random card from the forage deck. And this is a lot of fun because you can find things like mushrooms and stones, birch trees, uh, bumblebees. So you can find insects. And if you collect insects, you collect a certain set, then you get more victory points at the end of the game. So this game does have some various uh, some basic set collection and uh, foraging is always fun. I like drawing random cards from this deck. Next up is mining. Mining like foraging, but instead of going out into the forest, you are going deep into the mines and you are looking for ore. And again, you have set collection where you can collect a certain number of silver ore. You can find your rubies in order to boost your skills in the mine. Uh, you can find various kinds of stones that will allow you to gather materials. There's silver ore, there's gold ore, and there is copper ore, I believe. And in order to score points at the end of the game, you want to make sure to have a set of three of each in order to maximize your score. All right, the next skill we'll take a look at is the hunting skill. So there are dangerous slimes that are constantly invading your village and you want to hunt them. And you will have a slime deck here and you will get a certain number of points for each different slime that you have slain throughout the game. We have small slimes and large slimes. We have red slimes, green slimes, blue. We have large purple, small yellows. So all of these various slimes that you can go out and hunt. At the beginning of the game, there will be four different slimes available for you to hunt. Your final skill here is fishing. So you can go out and you can fish. And in fishing, fishing is a, uh, it's a, uh, a competition for the most fish. And there is a fish deck here and there are different kinds of fish like ocean fish, lake fish and river fish. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most of each kind of fish wins a total number of victory points towards the bottom. We're going to give this deck a shuffle and then at the beginning of the game, there will be four different fish available for you to go out and fish for. And then finally, your last card in your deck is your sleep card. And this is the card you play when you are basically done with your overall turn and you follow the steps on your sleep card. We can sell any number of resources that we've gathered throughout the turn for gold. We can return all of our used skill cards to our hand. We upgrade one skill card and we move the season tracker one space. Now each player plays at their own pace. That's why this is a cozy game. Uh, if your partner moves up to fall and you are still in summer, you don't automatically move up to fall as well. Every player plays at their own pace. One of the coolest things about this game is every single one of these skills, except for sleeping, can be upgraded. And one of the things you need to pay attention to is how much time each skill takes to perform. In the upper right hand corner of each skill card is a clock symbol, and that tells you how much time this skill takes to perform. Time is measured in cards. So if you wanted to go out and fish and you played your fish skill card, that costs one time. So you would have to discard another skill from your hand, meaning that you couldn't use that other skill uh, during that particular turn until you rested and got all of your cards back. So right from the very beginning of the game, you are making a decision 
about the path that you want your farm, that you want your farming life to go down. As these skills gain in level, and each skill has two levels, so you can go up to level two, and then finally you can go up to level three. As you start specializing in those skills, spending more time at those things, then using those skills will take more time. So at the beginning of the game, the turns are a little longer because things don't take as much time. And so you can do more different things. But as you start to specialize as the game goes, the turns start to speed up a lot and they go faster and faster because each of the various skills will take more time, meaning that you are spending more time doing that one thing and you aren't uh you aren't spending time doing a whole bunch of other things. So really, really cool little system. I like the skill system a lot. I like that you are constantly being forced to upgrade your skills. So it is creating this kind of snowball effect of how much time is used. So just really, really creative and really clever use of, uh, of a use of a hand of time management, of engine building, of set collection and action selection. It's a lot of fun. It's not typically my kind of game, but this is kind of my level for this kind of game. It's not a total brain burner. It's really easy to, to learn. It's really easy to teach. It's super pleasant and it is really cozy. I also do like the solo mode. So the solo mode, uh, everything is set up exactly the same way, except you do have this deck of villagers. And this deck of villagers will put some restrictions on you, such as if you drew Blair, uh, Blair would prevent you from purchasing and from planting during the spring and summer. Uh, Blair also requires one gold at the end of the year to contribute to the overall well-being of the village. Um, and then they, each of the villagers also wants a certain thing at the end of the year. So Blair here, she wants you to go out and hunt a green slime. Uh, Mr. Charles wants some gold. Little Susie wants a bug. Granny O'Malley wants some materials. And so you have to provide those things to each villager that you draw in order to gain the number of hearts, in order to gain their friendship. And depending on the difficulty that you play, you need to maintain that many number of hearts in friendship throughout the game. And if you ever can't do that, if you ever can't provide what they need or you can't pay the gold to the village at the end of each year, then you lose the solo game. Very creative use of a small deck of cards that really does add a lot of little wrinkles to the overall engine of the game. So Cozy Farms is a really nice little game. It's very pleasant. Um, like I said, it's not typically the kind of game that I'm into, but if I were to play this kind of game, this is the level of complexity, the level of involvement, the level of engine building that I do enjoy. It's quick, it's snappy, it's cozy, it's pleasant, and most of all, it is uh, fun, and it is a fun solo game. So all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed taking this brief look at Cozy Oaks, the new game from Peter Jank, designer of Quest for the Lost Pixel, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.